ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد ان دير بريز بيلونجز تو الله سبحانه وتعالى وي بريز هيم as he deserves to be praised and we ask for his aid and his assistance and we seek his forgiveness we seek refuge with Allah Azza wa Jal from the evil of our own souls and from the evil of our wicked actions whom serve Allah guides then none can misguide and whom serve Allah misguides then none can guide I testify that none has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah alone without any partners and I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and his messenger to proceed so continuing with Kitab al-Tawheed of Shaykh al-Islam al-Mujaddid Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab rahimahullah and alhamdulillah in the last lesson we completed Babu al-Khawfu min al-Shirk the chapter the fear of al-Shirk and alhamdulillah today we will continue to the next chapter Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah qala al-Musannifu rahimahullah ba'am الدعاء إلى شهادة أن لا إله إلا الله وقول الله تعالى قل هذه سبيلي أدعو إلى الله على بصيرة أنا ومن اتبعني وسبحان الله وما أنا من المشركين الله إزارة الحساب سيد محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم This is my way I call to Allah with sure knowledge I and who so ever followed you and glorified and exalted is Allah I am not from the part of the Israel Now, so we've reached the chapter Bab al-Dua ila shahadati an la ilaha illallah Chapter calling to the testification that none has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah And the Shaykh al-Fawzan again explaining some of the benefits why Shaykh al-Islam al-Mujaddid Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab rahimahullah mentioned this chapter at this moment in time and he said مُنَاسَبَةُ هَذَا الْبَابِ لِمَا قَبْلَهُ مِنَ الْأَبْوَابِ ظَاهِرًا جِدًّا The relationship between this chapter and the previous chapters is very clear. Who can remind me about the previous chapters? Who can remind me and give me a summary about the previous chapters? جزاكم الله خير نعم باب الأول معرفة حقيقة التوحيد The first chapter Understanding the reality of a Tawheed, simple. Ma'rifatu haqiqat al-Tawheed, three words. Understanding the reality of Tawheed. The second chapter, Naam, somebody else. Hamza, second chapter. Muhammad, faddal. Ijlis, Muhammad. Al-Jawab Naqis, faddal. Ahsan, Fadl al-Tawheed wa ma yukafiru min al-Dhunub Second chapter was the excellence of a Tawheed and its removal of sins The third chapter that we covered Fadl Which means what? Yes, third chapter Man haqqaq al-Tawheed dakhal al-Jannata bi ghayri hisab Whoever perfects Tawheed will enter paradise without any reckoning Chapter number four, Yasi, it was what? Naam, the fear of shirk. Bab al-khawfi min al-shirk. The fear of a shirk. Again, it's important that, alhamdulillah, we know the structure of what we're studying. Hadha muhim jiddan, barakallahu feekum. It's important that we know the structure and the arrangement of what we are studying. Naam. So yes, they were the previous chapters. And the Shaykh al-Fawzan again, that's what I'm saying, even with the explanation, alhamdulillah, and we've repeated this. Each chapter, the Shaykh repeats the order. So it's not a trick question. The question is not to catch anyone out. It's just to make sure that the basics are there. The, the Shaykh, Shaykh al-Fawzan explains again. Inshallah, again, if you, don't, if you haven't memorized it, make sure you write it down. Because next time I'm going to choose other people. 
to mention even this chapter in addition to the previous ones. It's not difficult. The Sheikh Al Fawzan said, "Fainno fil abwab al sabiqati dhakara fil bab al awal ma'arifat al tawheed." For verily, Sheikh Al Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab rahimahullah in the previous chapters he mentioned ma'rifat al tawheed, the understanding of a tawheed, the correct understanding of a tawheed or the reality of a tawheed. وفي الباب الثاني in the second chapter ذكر فضل التوحيد he mentioned the excellence of a tawheed وما يكفر من الذنوب وفي الباب الثالث in the third chapter in the third chapter ذكر من حقق التوحيد he mentioned whoever perfects tawheed and we know that whoever perfects tawheed will enter paradise without any reckoning without any punishment وفي الباب الرابع in the fourth chapter he mentioned that which totally opposes a tawheed, which is a shirk. So now, ma Shaykh al-Fawzani said, فَإِذَا كَانَ طَالِبَ الْعِلْمِ أَلَمَّ بِهَذِ الْأَبْوَابِ وَعَرَفَهَا مَعْرِفَةً جَيِّدًا عَرَفَ التَّوْحِيدِ وَفَضْلَهُ وَتَحْقِيقَهُ وَعَرَفَ مَا يُضَادُّهُ مِنَ الشِّرْكِ الْأَكْبَرِ أَوْ يُنَقِّسُهُ مِنَ الشِّرْكِ الْأَصْغَرِ وَالْبِدَعِ وَسَائِرِ الْمَعَاصِ فَإِنَّهُ حِينَ إِذٍ يَتَأَهَّلُ فَإِنَّهُ حِينَ إِذٍ تَأَهَّلَ لِلْدَعْوَ إِلَى اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجِلْ So Shaykh Al-Fawzani said, if the student of knowledge, and this is a very important point, if the student of knowledge has a good understanding of these things, the student of knowledge understands these chapters, he understands the meaning of a tawheed correctly. He has a good understanding of the meaning of a tawheed. He understands the virtue of a tawheed. He understands the perfection of a tawheed. And he has an understanding of that which opposes tawheed from major shirk and that which causes tawheed to be deficient from minor shirk and acts of disobedience and innovations then at this point in time this individual, this talib al-ilm is qualified to call to Allah yeah. Naam. if the student of knowledge he has understanding of these chapters that we have studied وَعَرَفَهَا مَعْرِفَةً جَيِّدًا good understanding, solid understanding Arafat Tawheed, he has a knowledge of Tawheed, wa fadlahu, the virtues of Tawheed, what does it mean to perfect Tawheed? He understands what contradicts Tawheed in the absolute sense, that which contradicts Tawheed in the absolute sense from major shirk and that which causes it to be deficient from minor shirk and innovations and the other acts of disobedience. Then at this point, the student of knowledge is prepared and capable to call to Allah the mighty and majestic. نعم لأنه لا يجوز للإنسان إذا علم شيئا من هذا العلم أن يختزنه في صدره ويغلق عليه ويختصه لنفسه It is not permissible for the servant that if they possess some knowledge that they store it in their chest and lock it away and they keep it for themselves It's not allowed to do that that's why, alhamdulillah, when we have a correct understanding, barakallahu feekum, we call to Allah Azza wa Jal. We don't keep this knowledge to ourselves. هذا العلم مشترك بين الأمة. This knowledge, هذا العلم مشترك بين الأمة. This knowledge is to be shared amongst the nation. فمن عرف شيئا منه فَإِنَّهُ يَجِبُ عَلَيْهِ أَنْ يَنْشُرَهُ وَأَنْ يَدْعُوَ النَّاسِ إِلَيْهِ Whoever possesses knowledge, then it is obligatory upon them that they spread it, that they call the people to it. فَإِنَّ هَذِي الْأُمَّةِ أُمَّةُ دَعْوَةِ For indeed, this nation is a nation of, nation of da'wah. Indeed, this nation is a nation of calling to Allah Azza wa Jal. كما قال تعالى الله the most high he said 
كنتم خير أمة أخرجت للناس تأمرون بالمعروف وتنهون عن المنكر وتؤمنون بالله You are the best nation that has arisen from mankind You enjoin what is good and you forbid the evil and you believe in Allah نعم This nation is the best nation From the reasons why it is the best nation they enjoy what is good and at the head of that is Tawheed and they forbid what is evil and the most severe form of evil is Shirk and they believe in Allah Azza wa Jal likewise Allah Azza wa Jal he said وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ let there arise from you a nation. Let there arise from you a group of people enjoying what is good and forbidding what is evil. Let there arise from you a group of people calling to that which is good, enjoying the good and forbidding the evil. And they are the successful. فَلَا يَجُوزُ لِلْمُسْلِمَ الَّذِي عَرَفَ شَيْئًا مِنَ الْعِلْمِ أَنْ يَسْكُتَ عَلَيْهِ It is not allowed for the Muslim that possesses knowledge to remain silent concerning it. And he sees the people in need of it. Especially as it relates to knowledge of Tawheed and knowledge of the correct belief. Because if a person was to do this, they have abandoned a great obligation. Yes. That is why, brothers and sisters, بَلِّغُوا عَنِّي وَلَوْ آيَةٌ Convey from me even if it's an ayah. Yes, if you only have knowledge of the text, you convey the text. But if you have knowledge of the text and you know the explanation, then you convey the text and you can explain it. Shaykh Al-Fawzani said, if a person abandons spreading knowledge, calling to Allah Azza wa Jal, especially as it relates to Tawheed and Aqeedah, then they have abandoned a great obligation. وَلَا يَقُولُ الْإِنسَانَ أَنَا مَا عَلَيَّ إِلَّا مِن نَفْسِي A person should not say, I only worry about myself. وَلَا يَقُولُ الْإِنسَانَ أَنَا مَا عَلَيَّ إِلَّا مِن نَفْسِي I only concern myself with myself. كَمَا يَقُولُهُ بَعْدُ الْجَهَلَ أَوِ الْكُسَالَ As some of the ignoramuses they say, or some of those who are lazy. Meaning some of those who are lazy, they're lazy, they don't want to call to Allah Azza wa Jal. They don't want to enjoy what is good. They don't want to forbid what is evil. Maybe they don't have the courage or maybe there are other reasons. He said, بَلْ عَلَيْكَ نَفْسَكَ أَوَّلًا ثُمَّ عَلَيْكَ أَن تَجْعُوَ النَّاسِ إِلَى دِينِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ He said, yes, it's upon you that you worry about yourself firstly and foremostly. But then also it's upon you that you call people to Allah. And brothers and sisters, all of us within our ability. If we see somebody, we're walking down the street and we see someone and they're calling upon other than Allah, for example. We don't close our eyes and say, I only worry about myself. No, alhamdulillah, and with wisdom, good manners, this is shirk. Calling upon other than Allah is shirk. A dua is worship. And you explain it. So all of us are responsible based upon our ability, based upon what we know. The Sheikh said, فَإِنْ اِقْتَصَرْتَ عَلَى نَفْسِكَ تَرَكْتَ وَاجِبًا عَظِيمًا If you only focused upon yourself, you've abandoned a great obligation. تُحَاسَبُ عَنْهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And on the day of resurrection, you will be brought to account. On the day of resurrection, you, Ya Abdullah, or Ya Amatullah, you will be brought to account. And you expose yourself to the anger of Allah. إِذَا تَرَكْتَ الْأَمْرِ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَرَكْتَ النَّهِي عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ If you abandon enjoining the good, and you abandon forbidding the evil, you've opened yourself, you've exposed yourself to the anger of Allah. May Allah protect us all from that. حيث تركت ما أوجبه الله عليك من الدعوة إلى الله عز وجل because you've abandoned what Allah has made obligatory upon you from calling to Allah. This is 
Habidukumullah, the relationship between this chapter and the previous chapters, it is clear. And that is why, alhamdulillah, if you look at the scholars, walillah, alhamd, the scholars of the ummah, the students, they learn with them, alhamdulillah, yadrusun عند المشايخ, and when the students, they benefit from the mashayikh and they leave their maraqis, they go, alhamdulillah, and they call to Allah Azza wa Jal. They go and they call to Allah Azza wa Jal. Whether they open their own masajid or maraqis, calling to the sunnah, it depends upon the place and ability. But alhamdulillah, that is what we find from them. And that, but again, it's upon a person first to learn. It is upon a person first to learn. But alhamdulillah, that's what we see from the people of the sunnah. That is why, naam, we have a need for people to study and to become firm, habidukum Allah, in order to call to Allah Azza wa Jal. Because the ummah is in need of many callers who have firm knowledge, who enjoy what is good and forbid what is evil, in accordance to the methodology of the prophets. And the chapter here is what? It's clarifying da'wah, what do we call to? What is da'wah? And this is a very important subject in itself. What is da'wah? Because da'wah is worship. Da'wah is ibadah. As mentioned by Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah. And we will see one of the proofs for that in a bit. فَقَوْلُهُ بَابَ الدُّعَاءِ إِلَى شَهَادَةِ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَا إِلَّا اللَّهِ Chapter calling to the testimony or the testification that none has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah. A. Ad-da'wah. Meaning calling to the shahada, the testimony that none has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah. وَأَنَّ الْمُسْلِمْ الَّذِي مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ بِمَعْرِفَةِ التَّوْحِيدِ وَمَعْرِفَةِ الشِّرْكِ لا يسعه أن يسكت وهو يرى الناس يجهلون التوحيد ويقعون في الشرك الأكبر والأصغر ويسكت على ذلك. This means that the Muslim whom Allah has blessed to understand Tawheed and understand what shirk is, it is not allowed for him or her to be silent when they see the people around them are ignorant of Tawheed and falling into shirk major a minor, and they are silent about that. It's not allowed. It is upon you that you do not fear the blame of the blamers. Rather, you fulfill the commands of Allah Azza wa Jal. And we see, alhamdulillah, we have brothers from all over the world here today. And listening to other lessons all over the world. It is upon you that you call your people to a tawheed, that you educate them about a tawheed, that you educate them about shirk, and that you are not lazy in this affair. It's important that you do not busy them with things that are over their head and are not as important as tawheed and abandoning shirk. Sheikh al Fawzani said, Kama huwa waqi'un kathira min talabat al ilm wal ulama. Listen to this, subhanAllah. Profound statement. He said, as is the case of many of the students of knowledge and scholars, meaning that they're silent. Look, he said, students of knowledge and scholars. So just because someone has knowledge does not mean that that person that has knowledge is going to fulfill what Allah commands him to do. They may have knowledge and for some reason, that Allah Azza wa Jal knows they do not call in accordance to that knowledge. Maybe because they fear the response of the people. Maybe because they fear their livelihood or their wages. Or other than that. الَّذِينَ يَرَوْنَ النَّاسَ عَلَى الْعَقَائِدِ الْفَاسِدَةِ وَالْعَقَائِدِ الْبَاطِلَةِ وَعِبَادَةِ الْأَضْرِحَةِ وَيَسْكُتُونَ عَلَى ذَلِكِ those students of knowledge and scholars who see the people upon false beliefs and corrupt beliefs, worshipping the graves, and they remain silent about that. They remain silent. 
They don't say anything. ويقولون and they say نحن لا نهتم إلا بأنفسنا They say we're only concerned about our own selves. والعياذ بالله Look at that. Even they try, they try to give tazkiyah they try and praise themselves. We are only worried about our own selves. Yes, we worry about ourselves but also Naam, we worry about the Ummah and we worry about the commands of Allah Azza wa Jal and Allah commanded us to call and invite the people to that which is correct. He said, بِهَذَا ضَيَّعُ وَاجِبًا عَظِيمًا He said, and this is why they have neglected a great obligation, these individuals. He said, وَلَوْ أَنَّ الْعُلَمَ وَطَلَبَةِ الْعِلْمِ قَامُوا بِمَا أَوْجَبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ هَذَا الْأَمَرِ فِي جَمِيعِ الْأَمْصَارِ لَرَأَيْتَ لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ حَالَةً غَيْرَ هَذِي الْحَالَةِ If the scholars and the students of knowledge, if the scholars and the students of knowledge arose with what Allah Azza wa Jal made obligatory upon them, if they fulfilled what Allah made obligatory upon them concerning this in all places in the earth, then you would find that the Muslims are in a different state to what they're in today. This is so true. The Shaykh said, Fal'an, you find at this current time, some of the lands of the Muslims, you find major shirk being practiced. You find tombs being built and shrines of shirk and people spending vast amounts of money upon them. And the disbelieving nations, they support this. And you find that the Muslims are silent about this. The Sheikh said, this is a great danger. Asab al-Ummah that has affected this nation. وَمَا أُصِيبَتْ بِهِ مِنْ حُرُوبٍ وَمَجَاعَاتٍ وَأُمُورٍ تَعْرِفُونَهَا إِنَّمَا هُوَ نَتِيجَةٌ لِهَذَا الْإِهْمَالِ وَالْعِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ فَهَذَا وَاجِبٌ عَظِيمٌ فَهَذَا وَاجِبٌ عَظِيمٌ and Shaykh Al-Fawzani closed this paragraph by saying, Habidahullah Ta'ala, he said, this is a dangerous matter that has afflicted this nation. And the wars and the famine and other than that that you are aware of is a result of the neglect in this area. Meaning the neglect of educating the people about the Tawheed and warning in Shirk. So this is a great obligation. Yes, if you go to a land, Alhamdulillah, you call the people to Tawheed and you warn them against shirk. Call the people to Sunnah, you warn them against innovation. Call them to obedience and you warn them against disobedience. Naam. And Shaykh al-Islam al-Mujaddin Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab rahimahullah, he mentioned from the proofs of this chapter, he said, and the saying of Allah the Most High, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرًا أنا ومن اتبعني وسبحان الله وما أنا من المشركين. Say, O Muhammad, this is my path. I call to Allah upon knowledge. I and those who follow me. And exalted is Allah and free of all imperfections. I am not from the polytheists. Shaykh al-Fawzani commented, he said, هذه الآية في آخر سورة يوسف. This verse is towards the end of سورة يوسف. يأمر الله سبحانه وتعالى نبيه محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أن يعلن للناس عن بيان منهجه ومنهج أتباعه. Allah سبحانه وتعالى commands the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم to announce to the people and explain his methodology and the methodology of his followers. Look, the Muslim is clear in their methodology. They don't get upset if they are asked about their methodology. لماذا نغضب? If you are asked, 
What methodology are you upon? How can you become angry? Rather, look. قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِ أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرًا Say, O Muhammad, this is my path. I call to Allah upon knowledge. Me and those who follow me. أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي وَسُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ And exalted and glorified is Allah, free of all imperfections. وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ I'm not from the polytheists. And the methodology of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam It is calling to Allah upon knowledge. This shows fadalla. عَلَى مَنْ لَمْ يَدْعُوا عَلَى بَصِيرَةٍ فَإِنَّهُ لَمْ يُحَقِّقِ اتِّبَاعَ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَإِنْ كَانَ عَالِمًا فَقِيهًا This shows, brothers and sisters, that the one who does not call to Allah based upon knowledge, then he has not completely followed the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, even if he was an alim, a scholar, and a person of understanding. If he doesn't have understanding, meaning of the da'wah, the way of the Prophet وسلم, he's not followed him correctly. And again, ikhwan, قُلْ هَذِي سَبِيلِي Say, this is my path, this is my methodology, this is my sunnah, this is my way. When Allah Azza wa said, قُلْ Say, meaning, قُلْ يَا Muhammad لِلنَّاسِ Say, O Muhammad, to the people, announce it to all of the people. هذه سبيلي This is my path هذه سبيلي Meaning السبيل معناها الطريق التي أسير عليها The path that I walk upon This is my methodology What is the methodology of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم أدعو إلى الله I call to Allah And again brothers and sisters We will see the explanation of this even further when we get to the hadith that is following this, had, uh, this ayah, hadith Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, it will clarify even further. Adu'u ilallah, I call to Allah. That's the methodology of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ila tawheed illahi azza wa jal. I call to the tawheed of Allah wa ifradi bil ibadah and for Allah to be singled out with all worship. وَتَرْكِ عِبَادَتِي مَا And I call for the abandonment. I call for the abandonment of worship of everything besides Him. I call to the abandonment of worship of everything besides Him. وَكَذَلِكَ الدَّعْوَةِ إِلَى بَقِيَّةِ شَرَاعِ الدِّينِ And likewise to call to the rest of the legislated rulings and legislation and listen to this point ikhwan fatakuna da'watu lil kuffar lid dukhul fil islam da'wa yes is da'wa calling the non muslims to enter islam likewise wa takuna da'wa lil usati min al muslimin lit tawbati ila allah azza wa jal wa ada'i al wajibat wa at tahdhiri min al wuqu' fi al shirk وَاجْتِنَابِ الْمُحَرَّمَاتِ Likewise, da'wah, calling to Allah, it involves what? Likewise, to call the disobedient from the Muslims to repent to Allah. Yes, da'wah is not just calling the non-Muslims to enter into Islam, but also inviting the Muslims to repent to Allah Azza wa Jal. Calling the Muslims to perform the obligations and warn them against shirk and command them to stay away from the forbidden affairs. فَالدَّعْوَةُ لَيْسَ الْمَقْسُورَةً عَلَى دَعْوَةِ الْكُفَّارِ Da'wah is not only restricted to calling the Muslims to Islam بَلْ حَتَّى الْمُسْلِمُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ بِحَاجَةٍ إِلَى الدَّعْوَةِ But it's also inviting the Muslims who are in need of da'wah because of some of them falling into ma'asi, sins, and mukhalafat, opposition to that which is correct, yahtajoon ila da'wah. They are also in need of da'wah. Da'wah to tawbah, to repent, and to fulfill the obligations and stay away from the prohibitions, and reminding them to fear Allah Azza wa Jal. So da'wah is general. 
Da'wah is general. And that is why, alhamdulillah, ikhwan, you see, alladheena yaqoomuna bihadhi da'wah, haqq al-qiyam, those who fulfill this da'wah, the way it should be fulfilled, meaning da'wah to the non-Muslims, and likewise da'wah to the Muslims, are the people of the sunnah. Are ahl al-sunnah. Walillah alham wal minna. Wherever you find them, alhamdulillah, that's why you see the people of the sunnah, walillah alham, out inviting the non-Muslims to Islam. Inviting the non-Muslims to Islam, walillah alham wal minna. Like we even here in Ramadan, just with us, we had more than 50 people embrace Islam. Just here. And alhamdulillah, the brothers, they go out every week with the table, giving da'wah downtown. So yes, da'wah to the non-Muslims, but also da'wah to the Muslims. Lessons in the masajid. And if the opportunity arises, naam, likewise outside of the masajid. So Allah Azza wa Jalla said, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرَةً Say, O oh Muhammad, this is my path. I call to Allah upon knowledge. قال الشيخ رحمه الله شيخ الإسلام محمد بن عبد الوهاب he mentioned إخوان a benefit from أدعو إلى الله I call to Allah he said فيه التنبيه على الإخلاص فإن بعض الناس إنما يدعو إلى نفسه in this I call to Allah there is a benefit because it highlights the importance of sincerity. For verily, some of the people they call to themselves. Yes, some of the people they call to themselves. And the Sheikh will mention some signs of that later on. And one of the signs of that Ikhwan, that individual, if someone offends them, they will jump on the mimbar and they will talk like they are, have lost their mind. Like they are intoxicated. You like to saddiq what comes from their mouth. But let someone make a mistake in the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. Or let somebody fall into bid'ah. Or other than that, you see them silent. Not saying a word. لا يحركون ساكنا That's a sign that person, he just wants people to gather around him. When he's spoken about, خلاص قامت الدنيا ولم تقعد. The world's in disarray and chaos. But when people contradict and oppose the Sharia of Allah, silent like a mouse. وَالْعِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ Shaykh Al-Fawzani said, فَقَدْ يَكُونَ الْإِنسَانِ فَقَدْ يَكُونَ الْإِنسَانِ يَدْعُوا وَيُحَاضِرْ وَيَخْتُبْ لكن قصده من ذلك أنه يتبين شأنه عند الناس وتصير له مكان ويمدح من الناس. الشيخ الفوزان he said some people they give lectures they give sermons they call but their intention is for his caliber or worth to become apparent to the people. So that he can have a station among them. And so that he can be praised by them. And so that the masses can gather around him. The Sheikh said, فَإِذَا كَانَ هَذَا قَصْتَهُ فَلَمْ يَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ If this is the intention of a person, he hasn't called to Allah. And again, look, that's another sign. You just want people to gather around you. You see blatant munkar. Blatant evil. وَالْعِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ or your organization, there are those they practice open munkar. And you don't say anything. Because you want people to gather around you. That's not da'wah to Allah. Da'wah to Allah, if you see munkar, especially in an organization that you belong to, you should correct it. So that people do not think that your presence amongst them and your silence is an approval of what they are doing. Ikhwan, let's just pause. Ikna, who did they invite at this conference? They had Yasir Qadi, they had Umar Sulaiman, they had a number of individuals, men of Dullal. Individuals working with them, not saying a word. How does a person now know the average Muslim? I shouldn't take from them. Wa antum la lil nasi shay'a. And you don't clarify anything for the people. But you work with Ikna. 
or you work with Yaqeen or these other organizations. How? How are the people going to know? And then, Zid ala dalik, you have individuals who, yuharibun, they go on a blind campaign making war against even the scholars and the students upon the sunnah to defend those who are and to legitimize working with the Muslim Brotherhood. Look, Ikhwan, subhanallah, da'wah, Shaykh al-Fawzani mentions a very important point. He said, this type of individual that just wants their caliber to be recognized, or that he has a place and a station with the people or praised by the people or the masses to gather around him or her, or her. If that's the intention of a person, then they have not called to Allah. They've only called to themselves. Also listen to this. A person that leaves off calling to Allah, then they have abandoned a great obligation. Yes, we don't abandon da'wah and we don't call to ourselves, the middle path is what? Have sincerity in your da'wah according to Allah Azza wa Jal. وَالْإِنسَانَ أَلَّذِي لَمْ يُخْلِسْ فِي الدَّعْوَةِ يَقَعْ فِي مَحْذُورِ عَظِيمِ The person that is not sincere in their call, they fall into a serious affair, great danger. بَلْ لَابُدْ مِنَ الدَّعْوَةِ It's a necessity that you give da'wah. نَامْ وَأَنْ تَكُونَ خَالِسَةً لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ And that your da'wah is sincerely for Allah Azza wa Jal. وَيَكُونَ الْقَصْ مِنْهَا إِقَامَةَ شَرْعِ اللَّهِ And your goal is for the legislation of Allah to be established. وَالْقَصْ مِنْهَا هِدَايَةَ النَّاسِ And the goal is what? هِدَايَةَ النَّاسِ For the people to be guided. وَالنَّفْعَ النَّاسِ And for the people to benefit. مَدَحُوكَ أَوْ ذَمُّوكَ Whether they praise you or they criticize you. Yes, the Sheikh said, فَبَعْضَ النَّاسِ Some people إذا لم يمدح ويشجع ترك الدعوة Some people if they are not praised and encouraged they leave of دعوة شيخ مقبر رحمه الله used to tell us سبحان الله he used to say the people like الإمام الشافعي رحمه الله قبله and other imams شيخ مقبر used to say you will never please the people focus on pleasing Allah he said even if you take your your duvet, your blankets, and you go into your home and you wrap yourself in them, the people will still have something to say about you. There's no way to escape. There's no way to escape. So therefore, focus on what? Pleasing Allah Azza wa Jal. Focus on pleasing Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. The Sheikh said, وَهَذَا Dalil, The one who abandons da'wah because he's not praised or because he's not encouraged, that is a proof على أنه لا يدعو إلى الله that he did not call to Allah وإنما يدعو إلى نفسه he was only calling to himself فليتنبه المسلم so let the Muslim pay attention to this and let their intent behind their call be sincerity to Allah seeking the face of Allah and to benefit the people and to liberate them from shirk and innovations and other oppositions to the truth. And then the Shaykh goes on to mention, fulfill the obligation upon you in terms of giving da'wah. وَالْكَثْرَ حَوْلَ الشَّخْصِ Large numbers around the people does not show his excellence. بَعْضَ الْأَنْبِيَاءَ لَمْ يَتَّبِعُوا إِلَّا قَلِيلٍ Some prophets were only followed by a few. And the hadith Ibn Abbas, it was mentioned to us earlier. And he mentioned a beautiful narration of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. اجتمع الناس على باب ibn Mas'ud رضي الله عنه. The people they gathered at the door of ibn Mas'ud. وهو يريد الخروج إلى الصلاة. And he wanted to go out to attend the prayer. فلما خرج ومشوا خلفه. When ibn Mas'ud he came out, ومشوا خلفه. And the people started to walk behind ibn Mas'ud. التفت إليهم. Ibn Mas'ud he turned and he looked at them. And he said, irji'u, return back, go back. فَإِنَّهُ فِتْنَةٌ لِلْمَتْبُوعُ مَذَلَّةٌ لِلْتَابِعُ This is humiliation for the one. This is a trial for the one who is being followed. And it's humiliation for the one who is following. Meaning, these large numbers that's following a person like this, it's a fitna for him. 
and its humiliation, madalla for the one who is following. He said, go back. Naam. Ad'u ila Allahi ala basira. I call to Allah upon knowledge. Al-basira, the meaning is al-ilm, knowledge. Bal hiya a'ala darajat al-ilm. This is the highest of levels of knowledge. Wa fi hadha dalil ala annu yushtaratu fi da'iyya an yakuna ala basira. This is a proof that it is a condition for the caller to Allah to possess knowledge. Yes, the caller to Allah has to have knowledge. Ikhwan, you can't freestyle with this. You can't just, you know, stand up and just start talking. La bud, look. Anu yushtaratu fi da'iyya an yakuna ala basira. Meaning, ala ilm bima yad'u ilayh. Knowledge of what he's calling to. أَمَّا الْجَاهِلِ فَلَا يَسْلُحُ لِلْدَعْوَةِ The ignorant is not suitable to give da'wah. If somebody says, you know, I'm jahil, I don't know anything, and they are, stop them there, say, Jazakumullah khair, don't go any further. Because some people, they start the lecture like that. I'm jahil, don't listen to me. Well, akhi, you need to leave the microphone and step aside. Because at the end of the day, Allah commands us that we don't speak without knowledge. Naam. You may not be a scholar, but you can't be jahil of what you are saying because we all know, every person of sunnah knows al-ilmu qabl al-qawli wal-amal. Knowledge comes before speech and action. So if you hear a person starting off, I'm ignorant, I shouldn't be talking, well, let's leave the talk. Khalas, intaha. La tuwasi. Because you may fall into that which is greater and more severe than that which preceded. But if you have knowledge of what you're saying, alhamdulillah, biha wa ni'mat. Shaykh Al-Fawzan, he said, لا بد أن يتزود بالعلم It is a must that you equip yourself with knowledge قبل أن يشرع في الدعوة Before you start calling to Allah لأنه في دعوتي يتعرض إلى الشبهات Because when you're giving da'wah, you're going to be exposed to doubts ومناظرات People are going to come and try and debate you فمن أين يجيب إذا وقف في وجه معاند أو معارد أو مشبه how is he going to respond? How is that person going to respond if he meets an argumentative, haughty opponent? Someone who is in opposition? Naam. Someone who has doubts? How is he going to respond? How is he going to escape that if he doesn't have knowledge? The person is going to fail. And that person may be a setback for the da'wah. That's why, Ikhwan, you see the mudhabdab, the one who is all over the place, Many times they lack knowledge, but they think they have knowledge. The one who's mudabdab, you find them like Ali Imam al-Uzahi said, one day here, one day there, one day with Ahlul Sunnah, one day with Ahlul Bidah. And they said, that man, he wants to gather Sunnah and innovation together. The mudabdab, they don't have knowledge. They don't have clarity of what they're calling to. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he said it is not known of any of the ulama of Ahl al-Hadith, Ahl al-Sunnah, nor the righteous from amongst them that they left off their aqeedah, their way. It's not known. Why? Because they were upon bayina min amrihim. They were upon clarity about their affairs. They were upon clarity. Asluha thabitun wa faru'aha fi sama. The roots were firm in the ground and the branches, they extended high up to the sky. The one who is firm and clear upon the fundamentals of Ahl al-Sunnah he will not be mudabdab. One day here, one day there. The mudabdab, and sadly, you find that there are a lot of them. One day here, one day there. That individual, la yultafati li. Nakira, la mahalu fil irab. How some of the measures to prevent that? Knowledge. Sheikh Al Fawzan said, Yatazawad, you gain knowledge. Ikhwans, we've seen it. Individual pose the easiest doubt. He can't respond. Ashal shubahat. And they can't respond. Why? Because there's no tazawud with ilm. They never learnt. Didn't take the time to sit with any of the scholars. Didn't take the time to really understand the way of the people of the sunnah and the jama'ah. That's why, subhanAllah, in 2022, they're still confused about tabligh and ikhwan and the other groups and parties. And they only think that bid'ah is, you know, with al-firq al-asliyah. 
like the Jahmiyyah, the Mu'tazila, the Rafida, and other than them. Hawla ma yafhamun, la yafqahun. Now, no doubt, those sects, as the ulama said, many of the innovations return back to them, but there are also new innovations. Wal-iyadu billah. Shaykh al-Fawzani has said, he said, if a person doesn't have knowledge of what they are calling to, their da'wah will fail. And it may be a setback for the da'wah. Or they answer with ignorance. And then it's even more severe. أَمَّا أَنْ يَسْكُتَ عَنِ الْجَوَابِ وَيَنْتَصِرْ عَلَيْهِ الْخَصَمِ Or, he's going to be silent, can't answer the question, and the opponent is victorious over him. وَالْعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ Likewise, the Sheikh said from another angle, I call to Allah upon knowledge, أن الداعية يحتاج إلى معرفة الحلال that caller needs to know what is halal and haram. Because he may say through ignorance, this is forbidden and it's lawful. وَقَدْ يَقُولُ بِجَهْلِهِ هَذَا شَيْءٍ حَلَالٌ وَهُوَ حَرَامٌ And he may say due to his ignorance, this thing is lawful and it's forbidden. So it's obligatory upon the caller that they have knowledge of what they are calling to. Naam. Inshallah, we'll move on to the hadith, bithnillah. عن ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لما بعث معاذا إلى اليمن قال له إنك تأتي قوما من أهل الكتاب فليكن أول ما تدعوهم إليه شهادة أن لا إله إلا الله وفي رواية وإلى أن يوحد الله فإنهم أطاعوك لذلك فأعلمهم أن الله استرض عليهم خمس صلوات في كل يوم وليلة فإنهم أطاعوك لذلك فأعلمهم أن الله استرض عليهم صدقة تؤخذ من أغنيائهم فترد على فقرائهم فإنهم أطاعوك لذلك فإياك وكرائم أموالهم وانتر دعوة المظلوم والتقي والتقي دعوة المظلوم فإنه ليس بينها وبين الله حجاب أخرجاه نعم <تصفيق> The next proof, Ikhwan, that Shaykh al-Islam al-Mujaddid Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah mentioned in this chapter is the hadith collected by al-Bukhari, a Muslim, in their authentic collections. And Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma. Ibn Abbas, he said, anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lamma ba'atha mu'adhan ila al-Yaman qal. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he sent Mu'adh ibn Jabal to Yemen, he said to him. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he sent Mu'adh to Yemen as a judge and a teacher. And Shaykh al-Fawzani mentioned, وَكَانَ بَعْثُ مُعَاذٍ فِي السَّنَةِ الْعَاشِرَةِ وَقِيلَ فِي آخِرِ السَّنَةِ التَّاسِعَةِ قَبْلَ وَفَاتِهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. Mu'ad being sent to Yemen by the Prophet وسلم, occurred in the 10th year after the Hijrah and it is said at the end of the 9th year prior to the death of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, أُرْسِلَ قَادِيًا وَمُعَلِّمًا وَدَاعِيًا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلِّ يَنُوبَ عَنِ الرَّسُولِ صلى الله عليه وسلم في هذه المهمات Mu'ad, he was sent to Yemen as a judge and a teacher and a caller to Allah, the mighty and majestic he was appointed by the Messenger وسلم, as a representative for him in these important matters. And again, Ikhwan, a benefit of this, and there are many benefits, is that, alhamdulillah, look at Ahlul Islam. Ahlul Islam, they do not have qawmiyyah nor asabiyyah. Mu'adh was sent to Yemen, he was not from Yemen. The people of Yemen did not say, he's not from here. Like some of the ignoramuses say today who have jahiliyyah in them, traits of jahiliyyah, pre-Islamic traits of ignorance. Mu'adh was not from Yemen, but he was sent to Yemen to represent the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Because إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً The believers are brothers. Whoever Allah blesses with ilm, we learn from. That is why in this hadith of the Prophet 
إن الله يرفع بهذا الكتاب أقواما ويضع به آخرين ويضع به آخرين Allah raises through the, through the Quran a people and he humiliates others through the Quran meaning those who turn away from it and do not implement it Naam, we have the story of a free slave who was appointed over the people of Mecca a freed slave and the ulama of Islam they mentioned there are many examples of freed slaves being appointed to the highest positions in the lands why? because what raises a person is their knowledge of the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu so for example if I am in my vicinity and someone comes and they are alhamdulillah a person of knowledge they are a person of ilm and then you hear that rhetoric that pre-islamic talk of ignorance maybe it's from a person because he doesn't have anything to offer he's scared about his position because if it's about knowledge he offers very little and he knows it so that's all they can bring but if we want to know about Islam, this is the methodology of the Prophet ﷺ. This hadith, Ikhwan, even is used, as we will see, as a refutation upon a number of sects. This hadith right here. The Shaykh al-Fawzani said, فَهَذَا أَوَّلًا فِيهِ مَشْرُوعِيَّةُ إِرْسَالِ الدَّعْوَةِ إِلَى اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ It might be du'at. Anyone have another print? I have da'wah here. I don't have my other book. Let me see it. Hot. The same. Anybody have du'at? Uh, da'wah. You have du'at? Now, that which seems apparent, Ikhwan, look, Alhamdulillah, there's a mistake there. It should be du'at, and Allah knows best. Irsal al du'at. That makes more sense. I have da'wah, he has da'wah in his book. One of the brothers has du'at. That seems more correct, and Allah knows best. So if you have da'wah, change it to du'at. فَهَذَا أَوَّلًا فيه مشروعية فيه مشروعية إرسال الدعاة إلى الله عز وجل وأنه سنة النبوية. This shows that it's legislated to send people out to give da'wah to Allah. Yes, send people out. So some people, if they're qualified, they go to different places calling to Allah عز وجل upon Quran and Sunnah, not the way of tabliq, not the way of jamaat al-tabliq, whom Sheikh al-Albani described as Sufiya asriya. And this hadith is a refutation upon tabliq, as will come. Likewise, Sheikh al-Fawzan said, Thaniyan, Fihi fadila li Mu'adh radiyallahu an, Haythu inna al-Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ikhtaruhu li hadhi al-muhimma al-azima. This shows the virtue of Mu'adh, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam chose him for this important task. Mimma yadullu ala fadlihi wa ilmi. This shows his excellence and knowledge. لأن الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يرسل إلا من توفرت فيه الشروط المطلوبة وقد توفرت في معاذ رضي الله عنه وكان أعلم الناس بالحلال والحرام. This is because the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would not just send anyone except the one that possessed the necessary qualities and they were definitely present in معاذ. Mu'adh radiallahu an was the most knowledgeable of the people concerning the lawful and the unlawful affairs. Likewise, another benefit. Wafihi aydan. If we look at the hadith ikhwan, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent Mu'adh to Yemen, he said, Inna ka ta'ati qawman ahl al-kitab. Verily, you are going to a people from the people of the book. فَلْيَكُنْ أَوَّلَ مَا تَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَيْ شَهَادَةُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ So let the first thing that you invite them to be 
the testimony that none has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah. And in one riwayah, fi riwayatin, ila an Allah. That the first thing you invite them to be, the tawheed of Allah. Naam. Sheikh al Fawzani said another benefit. Al amal bi khabr al wahid. That we act upon the narration of one person. لِأَنَّ الرَّسُولُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَرْسَلَ مُعَاذًا وَحْدَهِ Because the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he sent Mu'adh alone. He sent Mu'adh alone. وَهَذَا يَدُلُّ عَلَىٰ أَنَّهُ يُعْتَمَدُ خَبْرُ الْوَاحِدِ وَلَا يُشْتَرَتَ التَّوَاتُرْ كَمَا يَقُولُهُ بَعْضُ الظُّلَّالِ يَقُولُونَ أَمُورِ الْعَقَائِدِ لَا يُقْبَلُ فِيهَا خَبْرُ الْوَاحِدِ This shows brothers and sisters that the narration of one individual is to be relied upon and it is not a condition to reach the level of tawatur. As some of the deviants they claim that in matters of aqidah, belief, the narration of one individual is not accepted. That's people of rhetoric. Mu'tazila and those like them. Those who are affected like them. Because they say, Al-Ahadith, Ahadith Al-Ahad, La Tufid Illa Dhan. We only get speculation. There's no certainty to get from them. Which is kalib. If the Hadith is authentic, Naam. The Hadith that we find in Bukhari, a Muslim. And we know that the Ulama of Islam, they accept the Ahadith, for example, in Bukhari, a Muslim. And there's a difference on a very few Ahadith. Those Ahadith that the scholars, they differ, those Ahadith. That the scholars they agree upon, no doubt that we, we get certainty from them, without a shadow of a doubt. Naam. So, Ikhwan, the people of innovation, they say, no, you can't take aqidah from a narration, a hadith that's ahad, meaning it doesn't reach the level of mutawatir, even if it's in Bukhari, even if it's in Muslim. How al majanin, these individuals, Ahl al-Bid'a, they say, we don't believe in the punishment of the grief. The reason that they don't believe in the punishment of the grave is because they say, one, يُقَدِّمُونَ عُقُولُ مَا الْفَاسِدَ عَلَى النُّصُوصِ They give precedence to the corrupt intellects over the text because they say if you dig up the grave, you don't see any punishment. وَعَلَيْكُمُ السَّلَامُ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ If you dig up the grave, you don't see any punishment nor do you see any bliss. So they say, how can we believe in that? هَذَا مِنْ أُمُورِ الْغَيْبِ That's from the matters of the unseen, بَارَكَ الله Secondly, even though the hadith, the ahadith about the punishment of the grave, tawatara, tawaturan ma'nawiyan. They are, naam, they are mutawatira in terms of the meaning. There are so many ahadith talking about the punishment of the grave, they reach the level of mutawatir. But even if for argument's sake, they were only ahad, we would accept them if it's authentic from the Prophet wasallam. And then, ikhwan, notice how the people of falsehood, they come with all types of false and corrupt arguments. They don't just say to you something and then oh, you have to accept it. No, they come with such false arguments. They'll say to you because, you know, the sunnah, there's speculation and doubt about it. We're not certain about it. Look, a'udhu billah min al-hawa. That kalam there came from the Mu'tazila. Came from the Mu'tazila and those who are like them. That is why the scholars of Islam they warn the people about delving into rhetoric, ilm al-kalam. Because it, you, a person may end up like that. And somebody may say, in our time, yes, like the person in our time, the one who graduated from Yale, being affected, he's drank the same drink as them, may Allah protect us all from that. Naam. And Shaykh al-Fawzani said, look, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wal rasul iktafa bi khabr al-wahid. He sufficed with one narrator. He sent Mu'ad to teach the people aqidah. To teach the people the most important of affairs, the shahada. فَأَرْسَلَ مُعَاذًا إِلَى الْيَمَنْ يَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَيُعَلِّمُ التَّوْحِيدِ He sent Mu'ad to Yemen to call to Allah and teach tawheed. وَهَكَذَا مَا كَانَ الرَّسُولُ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يُرْسِلُ رُسَلَهُ جَمَعَاتِ The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم did not send groups out as delegations. إِنَّمَا كَانَ يُرْسِلُمْ أَفْرَادًا He would send individuals out to give da'wah. Like he sent Ali, like he sent Mu'ad. Like he sent Abu Ubaidah and other than them. 
showing us, brothers and sisters, that the narration of one, as it relates to the fundamentals of religion and the subsidiary matters, is acceptable in opposition to the scholars of rhetoric. What they say is false and it is rejected. Now, so the Prophet وسلم, he said to Mu'adh, إِنَّكَ تَأْتِي قَوْمًا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ فَلْيَكُنْ أَوَّلَ مَا تَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَيْهِ شَهَادَةُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَفِي رِوَايَةٍ إِلَىٰ أَنْ يُوَحِدُ اللَّهِ He said, indeed, you are going to a people from the people of the book. So let the first thing that you call them to be, the testimony that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah. And in one narration that they single out Allah alone. al Shaykh Al-Fawzani said, وقصد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من هذا The intent of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was for Mu'ad to be prepared for Mu'ad رضي الله عنه to be prepared because he was going to a group from the people of the book and we know the people of the book referring to the Jews and the Christians يحتاجون إلى استعداد علمي للمجادلة والمناظرة because when you're going to a group of people, Habidakumullah, the person must be prepared in their knowledge in order to debate or to address them in discussions. This shows that it, it's obligatory upon the caller to know the condition of those they are calling. وفي هذا أنه يجب على الداعية معرفة حالة المدعوين وهذا من منهج الدعوة. This is from the methodology of da'wa. أن الداعية ينظر في حالة المدعوين. That the caller, he looks at who he's calling. And he addresses them, kullun minhum, each one of them with that which is befitting for them. If he's addressing scholars, he addresses them like scholars. If he is addressing common people, he addresses them like common people. He addresses every person with that which is befitting. Not everyone is to be addressed in exactly the same fashion. You do not address the scholars like you address those who are ignorant. And you do not address those who are ignorant like you address the scholars. لا يليك بداعية Likewise, أن يخاطب السلاطين بخطاب عامة الناس Also, if a person is speaking to the ruler, it's not befitting that you talk to the ruler like you would just talk to the regular people. Or, they speak to the regular people like they would talk to the rulers. Every person is addressed in a manner that is closer to them accepting the truth. Allah Azza wa said to his two messengers, Musa and Harun, when he sent them to Fir'aun, فَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلَ اللَّيِّنَا لَعَلَّهُ يَتَذَكَّرُ وَيَخْشَى Speak to him mildly, gently. Perhaps he may accept admonition and fear Allah. And again, ikhwan, some people, they utilize that verse erroneously. Because now when Musa and Harun went to Fir'aun, they called him to Tawheed. Just when you call to Tawheed, yes, you use wisdom and the mannerisms for someone to accept your da'wah. Because if a person started off being harsh, the person listening may not accept what's being said. Allah Azza wa commanded them to be mild in their speech. But to be clear in what they are calling him to because they call Fir'aun to purify himself. To purify himself, meaning to worship Allah Azza wa Jal alone without any partners. To believe in the Tawheed of Allah, the Lordship of Allah, His names and His attributes, and to worship Allah alone. They were clear in what they were calling Fir'aun to. It was wadih. Now, some people they use that and they forget about everything else. Now, likewise also, it's important. When you are, look, the Prophet Sallallahu said to Mu'ad, إِنَّكَ تَأْتِيَ قَوْمًا أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ You're going to a group from the people of the book. So likewise, whoever you're going to, Alhamdulillah, even if they are Muslims, 
you have an idea of what their shubahat are, their doubts. Or if you're, you're invited to a particular masjid, you know that, for example, that masjid, they have some culture with them that is in opposition to the son of the Prophet wasallam and is considered to be bid'ah. So alhamdulillah, if it arises, naam, you can address it. And also you can address it with wisdom and call them to the son of the Prophet wasallam. So the Prophet wasallam said, فَلْيَكُنْ أَوَّلَ مَا تَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَيْهِ شَهَادَةُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Let the first thing that you call them to be the testimony that none has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah. هَذَا فِيهِ التَّدَرُّجْ فِي الدَّعْوَةِ This shows, حَبِذَكُمْ Allah, that there are stages in calling to Allah Azza wa Jal. وَأَنُّهُ يَبْدَأُ بِالْأَهَمْ فَالْأَهَمْ And that you start with that which is most important and then that is next in importance. وَهَذِي طَرِيقَةُ الرُّسُلِ This is the path of the messengers. أَنَّهُمْ أَوَّلُ مَا يَبْدَأُونَ بِالدَّعْوَةِ إِلَى شَهَادَةِ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَى اللَّهِ First thing they call to is لَا إِلَهَ إِلَى اللَّهِ Ikhwan, Yusuf when he was locked up in the prison, when they asked him about the dreams, what did he say to them first? ماذا قال? When Yusuf was in prison, and he was imprisoned wrongly, ظُلْمًا, because he was innocent, نعم, what did he call them to first? They asked him about the interpretation of the dreams. Yeah, he called them to worship Allah Azza wa Jal, firstly and foremostly. Before any dream interpretation. Before any dream interpretation, he called them to worship Allah. He called them to forsake shirk. Because he asked them, are the false deities that are worshipped better or Allah? Al-Wahid Al-Qahar, the one. The all conquering. So Yusuf is in prison. They ask him about dream interpretation. He calls them to Tawheed. And warns them about Shirk. Starting with what? What's most important. Then I'll get to the dream interpretation. Showing us you start with what is most important. You go to the nation of Islam, you don't talk about the importance of seeking knowledge. They might, you might finish that lecture and they pat you on the back. Brother, well done. And he's still a mushrik, wal-iyadu billah. Still believes that God's a black man. What? How's that da'wah? How can anyone be confused whether that's da'wah or not? That's not da'wah, that's mujamala. If yes, somebody offers us an opportunity to go to them. And I remember, subhanAllah, when the, the brother... Imam Asim rahimahullah when he visited us here and we sat in the office and we were just talking about different things and one of the things we spoke about was you know the nation and how certain organizations they still were close with the nation and that the nation still has their hands in, in some communities but I mentioned that naam, if, alhamdulillah still we have to be honest to them if they invited us to talk and give them da'wah, yes, we go and give them da'wah. The first thing we're going to tell them what? You have to believe in Allah. They don't believe in Allah Azza wa Jal. La yu'minuna billah. They believe that God is a man wal iyadu billah. They don't believe in al-hayy al-qayyum. Al-ladhi huwa al-awwal wa al-akhir wa al-zahir wa al-batin. They don't believe in Allah. The Lord of... Moses, Musa, Isa, Jesus, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa They believe that God is a black man. So if you go to them and they invite you, you call them first to heed. Clearly, no, you, you know, code to decipher. You have to believe in Allah azza wa jal, and you have to forsake that kufr, disbelief. You have to reject the belief that there is a messenger after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They have, it's wajib for them to believe that Elijah Muhammad is a dajjal, a false prophet. They have to. Farah Khan is a false prophet. We have to openly state that to them. We can't water it down. If you don't state, tell them that, that these are false prophets and they have to disbelieve in them, you haven't given them da'wah. That's not da'wah. That's mujamala. So the Shaykh, he said, this is the path of the messengers. 
أنهم أول ما يبدأون بالدعوة إلى الشهادة أن لا إله إلا الله. The first thing they call the people to is to testify that none has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah. لأن الأصل والأساس. This is the foundation. This is the foundation. It is the fundamental principle that everything else is built upon. الذي يبنى عليه الدين. It is the foundation and the fundamental principle that the religion is built upon. فإذا تحققت شهادة أن لا إله إلا الله فإنه يمكن البناء عليها بالأمور الأخرى فإنه يمكن البناء عليها بالأمور الأخرى If the shahada لا إله إلا الله is actualized then it is possible to build upon this with the other affairs فلا فائدة من بقية الأمور فلا تأمر الناس بالصلاة وعندهم شرك It's no benefit if shirk is present there's no benefit that you command them with anything else except for Tawheed and to abandon shirk. Don't command them to pray and they have shirk, major shirk. Don't command them to fast and give charity and zakat and to keep family ties and such and such and they're associ associating partners with Allah. Do not command them with these things whom you shirkuna billah and they're associating partners with Allah. لِأَنَّكَ لم تضع الأساس أولا because you haven't built the foundation وهذا بخلاف كثير من دعاة اليوم look شيخ الفوزان how he clarifies this is in opposition to many of the callers today look how he clarifies the errors that we find taking place in da'wah it's not an excuse to say oh this is da'wah they're giving them da'wah there's a way to da'wah that's why the Sheikh, how many times does he say, this is an opposition to many of the du'a today. This is an opposition to many of the students of knowledge today. This is an opposition to many of the scholars today. The Sheikh said, this is an opposition to many of the callers today. لا يهتمون بشهادتي أن لا إله إلا الله. They do not show concern for calling the people to the shahada. لا إله إلا الله. None has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah. وإنما يدعون الناس إلى ترك الربا. They call the people to abandon only riba, but they see shirk and they don't say anything about it. Or they call the people to have good dealings, or to rule by what Allah revealed, and they call the people to this and that. لكن التوحيد لا يذكرون. They don't talk about tawheed. ولا يلتفتون لا. They don't even pay any attention to it. وكأنه ليس مفروضا. Like it's not an obligation. ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. فهؤلاء مهما أتعب أنفسهم فإن عملهم لا ينفع. These individuals, no matter how much they exert themselves, their actions are of no benefit. That's why إخوان نعم. When you see, for example, like تبليغ, they go out and they only focus upon what Allah is our Creator, Allah is our Sustainer. But when they see graves in the masajid, they don't warn against that. When they see people committing shirk, they don't warn against that. Why? Because they say that's going to cause differing amongst us. Subhanallah al -Azim. Naam. They said about the Prophet وسلم, as we have in the authentic hadith, Muhammad farqun bayna nas or Muhammad farqa bayna nas. Muhammad, he split the people. Yes, there's truth and there's falsehood. The Prophet وسلم, clarified the truth, so those who stood upon it, they were upon it. And he clarified falsehood. So those who are upon it, they were identified as being upon it. He said these individuals, no matter how much they exert themselves, what they are doing is not going to be of any benefit until they call to Tawheed. He said, Hatta yuhaqiqul asl wal asas, until they actualize the foundation and the fundamental principle that all of the affairs of the religion are built upon. Whether it's hakimiyah, whether it's prayer, zakah, hajj, or other than that. The methodology of the prophets, everything is built upon la ilaha illallah, tawheed. And inshallah will suffice with that inshallah. Now the shaykh explains even more detail even about that part, that part of the hadith. Then the prophet sallallahu he said what? فَإِنْهُمْ أَطَاعُوكَ لِذَلِكَ If they obey you in that, فَأَعْلِمْهُمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ افْتَرَضَ عَلَيْهِمْ خَمْسَ صَلَوَاتٍ فِي كُلِّ يَوْمٍ وَلَيْلًا If they obey you in that, meaning as it relates to Tawheed, if they accept that Tawheed, then inform them that Allah Azza wa Jalla has made it obligatory upon them to pray five prayers in a day and a night. 
Then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi said, فَإِنْهُمْ أَطَاعُكَ لِذَلِكَ If they obey you in that, فَأَعْلِمْهُمْ Inform them أَنَّ اللَّهُ افْتَرَضَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُؤْخَذُ مِنْ أَغْنِيَائِهِمْ فَتُرَدُّ عَلَى فُقَرَائِهِمْ Then tell them that Allah Azza wa has made obligatory upon them zakat that is taken from the rich and it's given to the poor. فَإِنْهُمْ أَطَاعُوكَ لِذَلِكَ If they obey you in that. فَإِيَّاكَ وَكَرَائِمَ أَمْوَالِهِمْ Then beware of taking the best and the most valuable of their wealth. وَاتَّقِي دَعْوَةَ الْمَذْلُومِ Fear the supplication of the oppressed. فَإِنَّهُ لَيْسَ بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَ اللَّهِ حِجَابٍ Because there is no barrier between it and Allah Azza wa Jal. اتقي دعوة المظلوم Fear the supplication of the oppressed For verily there is no barrier between it and Allah Azza wa Jal أخرجاه Collected by Bukhari and Muslim نعم إخوان At the end of the hadith the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم He instructed Mu'adh what? To be wary of دعوة المظلوم And yes Even there comes in a hadith Shaykh al-Albani رحمه الله Declared it to be sound حسنه اتقوا دعوة المظلوم Fear or beware of the supplication of the oppressed وإن كان كافرا Even if it's a non-Muslim Even if it's a non-Muslim For verily there is no barrier between it and Allah There's no barrier for it So look ikhwan In this hadith نعم Beware in the hadith of Mu'adh Fear the supplication of the oppressed There is no barrier between it and Allah in the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu he said, اِتَّقُوا دَعْوَةِ الْمَظْلُومِ Fear the supplication of the oppressed. وَإِنْ كَانَ كَافِرًا Even if it's a non-Muslim. فَإِنَّهُ لَيْسَ دُونَ حِجَاب Because there is no barrier between it and Allah Azza wa Jal. Showing us, ikhwan, an important principle, which is what? An important principle is, and I mentioned it before, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he mentions it in Minhaj al-Sunnah. And Minhaj al-Sunnah, subhanAllah, Shaykh al-Islam is responding and refuting the Rafid al-Shia. And Shaykh al-Islam has more justice when refuting the Rafid al-Shia than some people have when they're refuting people from Ahl al-Sunnah in this day and age. Because Shaykh al-Islam, he mentions a principle. The principle is what? He said, Al-Adl, فَإِنَّ الْعَدَلْ يَجِبُ عَلَى كُلِّ أَحَدْ لِكُلِّ أَحَدْ Justice is obligatory Upon everyone, yani for everyone in every situation. Justice, al-adl, is obligatory upon everyone as it relates to everyone in all situations. فَإِنَّ al-adl, verily justice, يَجِبُ عَلَى كُلِّ أَحَدْ لِكُلِّ أَحَدْ فِي كُلِّ حَالْ أو كما قال Rahimahullah Ta'ala. That justice is obligatory upon everyone as it relates to everyone in every situation. Likewise, he said the opposite. For in the dhulma, oppression is muharram, is forbidden. Ala kulli ahad for everyone. لِكُلِّ أَحَدْ As it relates to everyone in every situation. So again, I'll repeat that one more time. Al-Adl justice is obligatory upon everyone as it relates to everyone in every situation. And oppression is forbidden for everyone as it relates to everyone in every situation. And we find many verses in the Quran, Ikhwan, لا يجرمنكم شنعان قوم على ألا تعدلوا اعدلوه أقرب للتقوى. Do not let the يعني the dislike of a people cause you to be unjust. Be just that is closer to piety. Look, somebody may say, well, give an example. Now, even as it relates to the non-Muslim, you can't lie against the non-Muslim. Just you can't say I'm lying against him because he's a non-Muslim. لا لا يجوز. Or you can't take the right of a non-Muslim. You can't steal from a non-Muslim. That's that's dumb. It's forbidden. Because some people may say, well, they're not a Muslim. Still, it's lie you to even oppress a non-Muslim. You can't lie against them. 
Allah said in the Quran, لا يجرمنكم شنآن قوم على ألا تعدلوا. Don't let the hatred of a people cause you to be unjust. اعدلوا هو أقرب للتقوى. Be just as closer to piety. Likewise, even as it relates to the mubtadi, the one who is an innovator, you can't lie against them and make up something that they didn't do. They done such and such, and you you justify it in your mind. You say that's an innovator. No. You can't lie upon them. That's why you see when the scholars refute them, the people of innovation, they have their statements, either from their books or their recorded statements based upon justice. And if you know something is untrue, you have to say that's untrue. Say, for example, somebody mentions something in your presence and you know what they're mentioning about someone is untrue, you have to say that's untrue. It's wajib alik. Even though that person may be your enemy, it's wajib upon you. Wajib. So it's not like, for, uh, and that's why, look, oppression. You can't say, for example, yeah, because he's my enemy and I of limuhu, I don't like some people, and they want you to go according, uh, you, they want you to ride with that. You know, yeah, we're going in accordance with that. La abadan. That's why Ahl al-Sunnah, Shaykh al-Islam said, how do you recognize them? You find them, you find them what? A'lam al-Nasi bil haq They're the most knowledgeable of the people about the truth, and they have the most compassion with the people. They don't need to oppress anyone. If the proof is there, the proof is there. Khalas, intaha al-amr, it's over. That's what they said. This is the correct statement, alhamdulillah. You don't have to talk about his mother. <laughs> you don't have to talk about, you know, Allahu A'lam, whatever else. You keep it religious. And we'll stop there, inshallah. Next hadith, we'll continue in the ne ne next lesson. Any questions from the class? Faddal. Now, Hassan. Bismillah. About being just, uh, living in Abu. Uh, you have a person that's not a Muslim, and you would say, uh, I'm going to sell you, I promise you, I'm going to sell you this car. And then you know the Muslim comes and says, you know, hey, I need a car. And he says, uh, you say, well, did you, that Muslim that you know that need the car, you know, you made your promise. I mean, you keep your word. If you gave your word that you're going to sell the car, alhamdulillah, you keep your word to the person that you told them that you're going to sell the car to. Fulfill your agreements, alhamdulillah. It's clear. You, alhamdulillah, you gave them your word. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said what? Ayatul Munafiq, Salath. From the signs of the hypocrites are three. One of them what? Yeah, what's another one? Wa idha wa'ada akhlaf. And when he promises, he breaks his promise. May Allah protect us from that. Now, any other questions, Ikhwan? Faddam. <coughs> if somebody who accepts Islam without learning Tawheed or Shaykh, and he comes to us to the Mazid, are we supposed to teach him about Salah and other things or not? Or first teach him Tawheed only? I mean, Alhamdulillah, you can do both. <laughs> you can teach them the meaning of the Shahada. And that, like, for example, our class is for the new Muslims. They teach them the basics of beliefs, but also they teach them how to pray. That should be the classes. Basic beliefs and how to pray. Alhamdulillah, you can teach them together. No. And if some non-Muslims, without learning anything, they want to accept Islam. Without learning the Tawheed. They just... No, but them. how? Because so, in, in, order for, in, in order for a non-Muslim to embrace Islam, they have to know the meaning of the Shahada. If they say the, if they say the Shahada and they don't know what it means, it doesn't benefit them. So say, for example, some, you say to somebody, say, La ilaha illallah. And he said, La ilaha illallah, just because you said it. And they didn't have a clue what it meant. It could mean anything to them. That's not going to benefit them. They have to understand the meaning. Al ilm bi ma'naha, wal amal bi muqtadaha. Naam al nutku biha, wal ilm bi ma'naha, wal amal bi muqtadaha. That they have to pronounce it, but at the same time they know the meaning of it. And then they implement it. So you have to teach them. That's why, alhamdulillah, you clarify to them the meaning of the shahada when you invite them to Islam and you explain it properly. So that when they accept it, alhamdulillah, they understand what they're saying. So is it okay to tell them to delay the shahada until they understand? Or like no, I mean, because at the end of the day, it's simple. Uh, giving da'wah to non-Muslims is not complicated. You tell them the shahada means what? La ilaha illallah means none has the right to be worshipped except Allah. We believe that all of the prophets call to this, to worship God alone without any partners. Simple, khalas. Do you believe that? Yes, I believe that. There is one God. I believe we only, we, we only worship God. I believe that we have to forsake worshipping anything other than God. Khalas, alhamdulillah, that's simple. It's very basic, easy. They say that, alhamdulillah. Well, you believe the first part, then you explain to them the meaning Muhammad Rasulullah. You believe that? Yes, alhamdulillah, except Islam. Tayyib. Naam. Faddan. Uh, 